Okay guys, so here's why you shouldn't buy the new MacBook Pros. What's going on YouTube? This is probably something you haven't heard too much around YouTube because the MacBook Pros, the new ones, have been so well received. And don't get me wrong, these things are fantastic and the performance is incredible. But I'm gonna give you a reason why you shouldn't be buying it. Okay, before we get started, hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss this. We cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show. All right, so let's talk the new M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros. It's a mouthful, but we're getting through it. So we've got uh, the 14 inch and the 16 inch versions. They're incredibly powerful. They come with mini LED displays and they are just taking the world by storm right now. So for a lot of people, this seems like a no brainer, right? Just jump right into the new MacBook Pro. They start at two grand. Um, so for people who M1 just wasn't cutting it, maybe they need just a little bit more power, a little bit more performance, or they want a little bit more size between, you know, they, they weren't really liking the 13 inch um, and they wanna go 14 or 16 inch uh, it seems like a no-brainer but I think the perfect combo for me and you've probably seen me using that combo before if you're not new to this channel is the M1 iPad Pro along with the Mac mini M1 Pro and M1 Max processors. Now, of course, this device is not yet out yet. So if you need to buy something right now, well, then you're out of luck. But if you could just wait until around November, mid-November, you would be in for a treat. Because you see, these M1 Pro and M1 Max processors are going to be in the Mac Mini, but because they don't come with a screen or a keyboard or anything else, it's a bring your own peripherals kind of party, uh, they're gonna chop that price down. Now the M1 Mac Mini starts at $699, sometimes on discount for $550. I'm assuming that this new M1 Pro and M1 Max uh, Mac Mini is going to start at around 1000 to $1199, maybe $1299 at the max. But I would think 1000 for a starting price and that's gonna be nearly twice as much. It could be as much as twice as much as the current Mac Mini. But what you're gonna be getting is all the things you love about the new MacBook Pros just without the display. But if you have the M1 iPad Pro, it makes a great combo because you can plug in the display, you can plug in your uh, mini LED M1 iPad Pro into your Mac Mini and get all the goodness of HDR if you need HDR reference monitoring. Um, these displays are extremely color accurate and it's, it's truly a Pro display at 120 hertz, just like the new MacBook Pros. Um, and then when you don't need that, you can bring all that power right into your office space. Um, I think that's going to be a great combo for me. The M1 has more than enough power to get my pro work done and editing when I'm on the go. Great display and all that stuff. But if I really need the horsepower, uh, because let's face it, M1 still is quite enough performance for most people. I mean, this thing is beating quad core i9s and then some. So let's not pretend like it's not something that you can get work done on. But for those of you who need even more horsepower, you're editing multiple streams of 4K with text overlays, with color grading, etc., or doing 3D rendering or compiling code, etc. If you need that M1 power, you can get that. Because let's think about it. How often would we actually be compiling code out and about? I mean, you could, and I understand if you need to, if you need to be mobile while editing code or you need to be mobile while editing video, um, you know, maybe the MacBook Pro is right for you. But if you don't need the mobility, but you are in love with and really want the new powerful, powerful processors in these new MacBook Pros, just wait a little bit and they'll be in the Mac Mini. We're even hearing uh, rumors now about the iMac, which is set to start at 2000, the same price as the new MacBook Pro but it's going to be a desktop obviously and it's going to come with a larger xdr display so if it's all about oh you know bigger screen size 14 and 16 inches stuff like that um you can't beat the imac when it comes to that so yes the macbook pro hits the perfect combination of portability and power don't get me wrong but um, a lot of people just aren't thinking, hey, what if I don't need the portability? Uh, you can get these new processors, these new processors for basically half off. Um, so something to consider. I said, personally, I'll be going with the M1 iPad Pro. Now, yes, I said M1 iPad Pro. For those of you who don't know, I switched to the M1 iPad Pro. I know I sound like a hypocrite, but I made a video explaining why I did it. I think I have a good reason. So check that out. Link will be down in the description below. And of course, in addition to the M1 iPad Pro, I hope to be rocking the new M1 
M1 Pro or M1 Max Mac Mini, um, which we'll hopefully be seeing by the end of this year. I would guess around mid-November. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. What variant, what flavor of M1 Pro or M1 Max uh, would you like to have, whether that be iMac or Mac Mini or iPad or MacBook Pro? Let me know. Uh, please don't say iPhone, but if you say iPhone, just... I mean, that's your right. <laughs> Be sure to keep it locked here. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show.